Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching JavaScript for Beginners Lesson 6 and in this video we're going to take a look at the basic syntax and structure of JavaScript. That's coming up. Alright then gang, so there's just a few things I want to go over when it comes to syntax and structure of JavaScript before we start writing any real code and they're going to be beneficial for you as we go forward through this playlist. So there's just a few pointers I want to go through and the first one is that JavaScript is case sensitive. I'll say that again because it's really important, it's case sensitive. Okay, this little alert function that I've written here, this wouldn't be the same as this because we've added a capital A to the start of it, okay? This alert function is a built-in function of JavaScript and it's called alert with lowercase letters. If you were to try and call it with an uppercase letter, then that would be void. It wouldn't work, okay? So it's case sensitive. The same goes for naming your own functions or variables. For example, if I was to write a function called my function, and then specify some code in here. Don't worry about all the syntax just yet. And then if later on I was to try and call this function by saying my function, this wouldn't work purely because I have a capital F here and not here, all right? So case sensitivity is very important in JavaScript. The second point I wanna make is that most things you do in JavaScript is a statement, okay? You could have a statement to throw up an alert box like this. This is a statement in JavaScript. Or you could have a statement to change the color of your web page background, or a statement to change the position of a picture from left to right on your web page. They are all statements, okay? And each statement ends with a semicolon, all right? Now, we could have another statement next to it, like I could do this, um, I don't know, hi again like that and run statements left to right. But if you carried on doing that, then this would get pretty unreadable and illegible quickly. So the best thing to do is pop them one on top of another like that, okay? Now, each statement ends with a semicolon. That's important as well. Now, technically speaking, if you miss out the semicolon, it will still perform a function like this. But if I was to write other statements down below, it wouldn't know where the first statement ended and so it may get a bit confused and not work. So I want you to get in the habit of always adding your semicolon onto the end of statements, okay? So ideally, on top of each other, a new line for each statement, and always put your semicolons after a statement. Now, white space is not sensitive. Like I said, you could have another uh, one of these statements right next to this, mm. and you could put in five spaces, 10 spaces, three line breaks, one line break, it doesn't matter, okay? Generally what I do is if it's grouped together with this statement, like if they're performing tasks that are similar to each other and relate to each other, I just do this and have them close next to each other, hugging each other on the next line. If they were something different, I'd maybe put a line break in or two, then do a comment just above this to say that it's a different part. And that brings me on to comments. So comments are very similar to CSS comments, okay? We can comment out a segment of code by doing a forward slash, then an asterisk, and then an asterisk, and a forward slash. And that would comment all the code out in between these two comments here, these two uh, asterisks. We, if we want to just make a, a single line comment, we can do that by doing two forward slashes and then everything on this line will be a comment. And this is what I generally do if I'm doing a little header in my JavaScript to remind myself and other developers working on this script what is coming up. So I could write here, uh, the second alert, just like that. And then that would remind me when I come to redo this code that this is the second alert. And I could do something like the first alert. Okay, so that's generally what I do. And yeah, if I'm just doing, sorry about this, if I'm just doing um, simple statements like this, then maybe I don't need these comments. But when you have like 20 lines of code between each comment, then it's useful just to remind yourself what's going on in that code. Okay, so the last thing I wanna mention is that JavaScript, much like CSS, runs from top to bottom. So it will come in and it will perform this statement first of all 
for, come further down, then it will perform this statement and then any subsequent statements down below. Now this is really important because if you have multiple statements that you want to perform in a particular order, you have to make sure you put them in that order in the JavaScript. For example, if I had a statement that was um, say make the image invisible, yeah, and then under that I'll say move the image from top to bottom and then make the image visible. All right, so that would, first of all, say you've got an image at the top here like this. It would make it invisible, fade it out, then it would move it behind the scenes to the bottom so you wouldn't see it moving at the bottom because it's still invisible. And then when it gets to the bottom, it will turn visible again. Now, if I was just to change the order of these two, that would impact the functionality of it significantly, okay? So first of all, your image would be here. It would move it from top to bottom, so you'd see it going right down to the bottom. Then it would make it invisible, and then visible. So you'll just see it like flicker at the bottom, okay? So very important, the order of your JavaScript. So just to summarize the points we've made in this video. First of all, JavaScript is case sensitive. And I always remember that because of the way this JavaScript is written here. We have a uppercase J and an uppercase S. So it always reminds me that JavaScript is case sensitive. Um, it contains many statements, all ending with a semicolon. I remember a statement is pretty much anything that you do in a JavaScript document. So changing the color of something, changing the position of something, changing the visibility of something, all those are statements. And they all end with a semicolon. It's not sensitive to white space or line breaks. So you could have three lines between your statements, 10 lines, or you could pile them next to each other. It's up to you. Um, you can write one line comments using two forward slashes or multi line comments using the forward slash and asterisk combination. And JavaScript runs from top to bottom. So all of these six points are really important and you just want to ingrain them into your thought process when you're writing JavaScript. So that's about it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to pop them down below. I'll answer all of those. Otherwise, I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy these videos and please like and share them too.